Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this session. Um, so, in this session, uh, uh, the main objective uh, of this session uh, is to discuss uh, the problem of conflict of interest uh, in finance markets. So, we are going to discuss uh, what are the areas where we can see conflict of interest in the finance market and because of that, uh, in which way, how, how does this the issue of uh, conflict of interest uh, adversely affect the efficient working of finance market. So, one of the features that we have seen in fina financial system is that the existence of large number, many number of uh, financial institutions. Financial institutions are prevalent uh, in finance market mainly because they have expertise in interpreting signals and collecting uh, information. Right. This we have discussed in length in one of the previous sessions. We can also see that they have been providing, providing multiple services in the market. So, this includes for example, uh, you know because of providing multiple services uh, that is collecting, uh, producing and distributing information. So, look for example, banks, you know that banks, uh, they collect information and they produce this information and to some information they distribute as well. Similarly, rating agencies, uh, you know that uh, they also collect lots of uh, information about the financial market or different uh, firms, uh, different stakeholders and then they distribute this information. So, because of that, when they collect, uh, produce and distributing information, sometimes they, they have economies of scale. They often uh, enjoy economies of scale, that is the volume of their activity uh, is actually provide them, inside they provide incentive for them uh, into make, uh, to engage more and more further the different types of uh, economic, uh, different types of uh, financial activities including all these. The low cost of information production, it often leads to economies of scope as well. So, that means because of economics of scope, we will discuss both this concept in detail uh, because of low cost of information production leads to economics of scope as well. Actually, you know that most uh, the, there is nothing new, but actually the economic institution, that the financial institution, just like any other firms, uh, they try to maximize profit. So, while trying to maximize profit, they often rely on this economies of scale, uh, they also make use of economies of scope. Uh, in order to make uh, maximize their profit and in this during the maximization of profit uh, they offer this process actually process leads to conflict of interest uh, this actually uh, adversely uh, affect this would adversely affect uh, the financial market the financial market financial system adversely affect the financial system. So, before proceeding further, let us see what is the concept called this economies of scale and economies of scope. So, for starting with first of all economies means it is all about cost effectiveness, then economies of scale means it is all about the benefits gained by the production of large volume of a product. So, when the when you keep producing large amount, large volume of product or uh, mass production then the per unit cost that is the margin cost of production decreases, decreases very fast, it diminishes at a faster rate that is one. Then, then about the economies of scope that means instead of economies of scale we talk about the volume, economies of scope means is linked to the diversity that means variety you can see that is linked to the benefits gained by producing a wide variety of product by efficiently utilizing the same operation. So, coming to the first part, the economies of scale, it occurs when a firm gain efficiencies from producing a wider variety of products, that is the economies of scope, a wider variety of products. That means, it make 
it cheaper to produce a range of products together than to produce each one of them on its own often this is the case uh, when business uh, when the business own a lot of enterprises so for example you can see that a bank suppose a large bank that is their bank for the bank bank is one of their business right so in the case of bank you know that uh, they because of the bank they have the large uh, several branches across the country and they have the strong economic and managerial technical capacities uh, they are having so because of that uh, you can also see that banks will be uh, starting uh, insurance business they will be the same bank will be entering uh, insurance industry as well you know why because they already have all this expertise for example the infrastructure the um, uh, premises they are having across the country so they have the wide network and because of that it is easier for them to start an insurance firm as well and you know that because the banks bank, the, this bank you know that they will be having large number of customers so it will be easy for them to sell uh, insurance product to them as well so you can look at for example state bank of india state bank of india also has the, the insurance right life insurance they are having sbi life insurance they are having in addition what they'll do that since they have access to lots of information the same bank bank also will start uh, some research uh, they will engage in research that means they'll do consulting so because initially the research it will be helping them uh, it will be helping their insurance industry and it will be helping their banking industry banking industry activities uh, the research will be helping them and for them to do the research they'll be getting data from this bank and insurance as well plus you know that uh, they have been using making use of the online facilities online banking facilities online insurance facilities most of the online facilities it will also uh, facilitate from them from uh, research uh, help them to do better research and they can also actually some of the software uh, businesses also they will acquire because they think that maybe another service they will do that the software software business they will be engaging because you know that all these are actually mutually uh, connected they are mutually syncing uh, so because of that they will be having multiple business so this is actually called diversity diversity or variety uh, this is nothing but economics of scope so this is called economics of scope and what we are going to see that uh, because of economics of scope sometime often it leads to conflict of interest it often leads to conflict of interest uh, that actually going to affect the working of financial system economics of scale which I, I forgot to mention so economics of scale is actually means the defined as a change in output for a given change in inputs so you can see that when they produce large number of goods uh, like the quantity when they keep on increasing the quantity and obviously you know that their cost of production uh, will decline so for example look at for example a mobile phone production maybe we are for example getting a mobile phone for 10,000 for example but you know that if we directly if we one firm want to produce only 100 units of firm 100 units of mobile for example then you know that the unit cost is going to be because by just in order to produce 100 units uh, they need large investment and then the unit cost won't be the average price average cost that the price they cannot sell it at the market at the 10,000 but what if they produce uh, millions of units millions of units different models and all then because of that there is uh, economics of scale and then the unit cost will be reducing so that means the percentage change in cost from one change percentage change in outputs uh, you can see that if it is greater than one you can see that is uh, economics of scale right so because that is one then economics of scale is one that would often further lead to economics of scope as well then let us connect this one to the our financial marks context so then the question here is that uh, what is the how does it leads to conflict of interest how economics of scope uh, leads to a uh, e conflict of interest and let us see what is conflict of interest before we are discussing that in detail what kind of conflicts of interest prevalent in financial market uh, let us see uh, what is conflict of interest here so conflict of interest arises it arises when a financial service provider or an agent within such a service provider has multiple interests which create incentives to act in such a way as to misuse or conceal information uh, needed for the effective functioning of financial market 
so that means concealing information or misusing the information which they are aware and uh, engaging in some kind of malpractice maybe they are incentivized to do that uh, that would often lead to uh, affect uh, adversely affect the effective functioning of financial markets and that will uh, deepen um, that will further aggra aggravate the problem of asymmetric uh, information that will aggravate the problem of uh, asymmetric information so when an institution provides multiple financial services thereby creating an opportunity for exploiting the synergies or economies of scope by inappropriately diverting some of their benefits then this would adversely affect the working of uh, the finance market so because of the multiple objectives which i mentioned for example uh, same firm starting multiple business bank for example starting insurance firm starting its own uh, consultancy businesses and sometimes the banks uh, so, so many banks join together and what if they start um, setting up a rating agency a credit rating agency so all these actually you know that sometime they will be rating some of the products of its own uh, uh, that means the own banks the banks own products own they will be rating their own products their parent companies products so that all actually going to create some uh, create it adversely affect the efficient working of the financial market so because of these multiple objects conflict between these objectives happen right so someone is uh, for example credit rating agency so they have the credit rating agency at the same time they are also in the investment banking they are also in the consultancy business so because of these multiple objective there is going to be a uh, conflict so when multiple services they provide there is com potentially competing interest and you know that obviously ultimately they want to maximize this profit because they are all firms uh, uh, at the end of the day they are all firms uh, they want to maximize their profit and they have to satisfy their st shareholders and accordingly they will be working so all this as i mentioned just previously may lead to conceal information or disseminate misleading information uh, in the financial market so why do we care conflict of interest then you know that this actually uh, reducing uh, the quality of information uh, in finance market this will uh, aggravate the problem of asymmetric information then ultimately what is going to happen that the concept that we discussed in the uh, session previous session that means metric information will create uh, adverse selection problem and moral hazard problem that all uh, would lead to preventing uh, prevent channeling channeling funds into the most productive uses uh, let's now discuss what are the major sources of conflict of interest in the finance market so there are large number of the large areas several areas of financial activities with a combination of uh, other activities uh, which all lead to conflict of interest however uh, for the sake of simplicity and to manage our discussion uh, let us uh, classify all this into broadly into four areas of financial activities uh, that is actually the more prominent um, relevant in the financial market and let us discuss this one by one so one area is with the investment banking uh, when they engage in both research and underwriting uh, then these lead to conflict of interest and the second is auditing firms because we have seen that most government in order to ensure a sound financial system uh, in order to reduce the asymmetric problem uh, asymmetric information problem most countries uh, actually the government uh, as the firms uh, to get their balance sheet get audited by independent firms right and however the auditing firms uh, sometimes they also have consulting business as well so auditing firms they because of the economics of scope uh, they also engage in consulting as well so this actually create further conflict of interest then the third one rating agencies the credit rating agencies their primary duty is to do credit assessment and they also do consulting how why they do because they have lots of information because they how do they do credit rating credit assessment because they collect lots of information about the default risk about the economic fundamentals of each and every firm whom they are uh, they are, they are going to do the for or for uh, those of, for those products uh, the, that uh, debt products or ipo that they are going to do uh, debt products 
uh, instrument that they are going to do the credit assessment. Uh, so, because of that process, they are getting lots of information. They are investing lots of labor and technical managerial uh, expertise they are utilizing in order to collect lots of information and because of that actually they have uh, lots of uh, this capacity that the managerial and information uh, they are uh, technical managerial and technical capacities and based on that they also engage in uh, consulting as well. Then the third area is universal banking. Uh, what if the same bank engage in commercial banking activity, investment activity and insurance company, uh, they, they set up the so one bank, the parent bank set up, they have the commercial bank, investment bank uh, and insurance companies. So what we are going to do see here that because of all these, uh, the conflict of interest, this will lead to financial crisis and uh, clearly to showcase all this, how fine conflict of interest really have, uh, lead to financial crisis. The 2007-8 financial crisis is one of the classic example of how a conflict of interest led to uh, this um, uh, financial crisis of 2007-8. And actually when we study 2007-8 crisis, actually we are going to review all these points what we are going to discuss here. That means each of that actually the conflict of interest played a major role uh, in the 2007-8 crisis financial crisis. Let us now discuss one by one what are the uh, areas of conflict of interest and how does it affect, uh, what are the possible way it affect, it affects uh, the working of financial system. So one area of a conflict of interest is in investment banking. What if when investment banker uh, engage in both research and underwriting? So, investment banks because of their huge vast managerial and technical expertise, they engage often engage in uh, two tasks. One is research to companies issuing um, securities. Uh, that's, that means one is actually research, we can also say that consultancy also a little bit we can say. Second one is underwrite uh, these securities. So, the information synergies from underwriting research and market making provide a rational for combining these distinct financial services. This combination of activities leads to conflict of interest, however. So, the conflict of interest that raises the greatest concern uh, occurs between underwriting and brokerage where investment banks are serving two client groups. One is issuing firms and the other one is uh, investors. See, look at, there are actually two uh, serving, two client, uh, client groups, actually both of, both of them are uh, on the opposite side, actually in the contra both sides of the market. Actually one is the who is issuing these securities and the other one, they also do give services to the investors. So issuers benefit from optimistic research. So the, the firm uh, who is issuing a security is expected to benefit uh, from the research output that they are getting from the, their uh, client, the, the client that means the, from the research companies while investors desire, what the investors, if you are a lender, uh, you will be expecting an unbiased uh, research. So, in, if the incentives for these two activities are not properly, appropriately, uh, appropriately aligned and there will be a temptation for employees on one side of the firm to distort information to the advantage of their clients and the profit their department. So, you can see here that when the, the, the same firm, the investment banks underwrite, what is underwriting means? Uh, underwriting means uh, an individual or an institution undertakes the risk associated with a venture, that means an investment or a loan in lieu of a premium. So in the securities market, for example, underwriting involves, uh, underwriting involves determining the risk and price of a particular security. That is, uh, it is a process seen most during IPOs wherein uh, investment banks first buy or underwrite securities of the issuing entity then sell them in the market. So this ensure that the issuers of the security can raise the full amount of capital while earning uh, the underwriters a premium in return for the services.
So this actually because as I mentioned here, uh, they will be able to do, they, when they are doing underwriting, uh, at the same time we also see that they do the research, provide research services and they combine uh, uh, tasks because of information synergies. So in this case, you know what is going to happen. So the information produced for one task may also be useful for the other, that is the economics of scope, right. So the research, they, the output they are having, they also will be using it for underwriting these securities. However, um, the brokerage that they are getting, uh, the brokerage that they will be getting uh, by providing research services, consultancy, these services to the companies, at the same time as an underwriter, what is the benefit that they are getting? Sometimes there will be, maybe one area may be, uh, they will be benefiting more, they, the return from brokerage may be large as compared to underwriter or maybe uh, they sometimes feel that uh, an underwriter, as an underwriter, uh, sometimes they have the incentive to little bit tweak or manipulate the price. That means the, uh, for example, while issuing IPO, how much price, uh, what is the unit price of the IPO, sometimes they have some incentive to bias it, bias it. So brokerage versus underwrite, what if uh, potential revenue from underwriting uh, is greater than the brokerage commission? So because if this, this happen, you know that there is strong incentive to alter information in favor of issuer of securities. So they have strong incentive to alter information in favor of issuer of securities. Then this actually also you see this will be they are actually doing it in a biased way. They are not actually the for example the securities price uh, what we expect that the price of securities for example the price of securities it should be reflecting the economic fundamentals of that firm not based on any other aspects. So here uh, let us see that what this in order to get for example the research business or get the underwriting business, sometimes this firm uh, they engage in some other malpractices uh, to say for example spinning. Spinning means uh, investment bank uh, may allocate the hot but underpriced IPOs to the executives of other firms to, so to persuade them to get their firms consulting business. To get the, their consulting business, what they will do that when this investment bank, when they are underwriting uh, any new security, securities or IPO uh, for, for issue a IPO of a new firm, another firm, suppose then what they will do that they will be giving some hot that the new uh, the IPO that means newly issued share that you can say uh, that they will be give, giving uh, to the executive of the other firms. That means they are in a way a kind of bribing indirectly we can say that a kind of bribing uh, so that um, the managers of that firm, the another firm uh, whom, who got these IPOs uh, have an incentive to approach, is incentive to hand over the consulting businesses of their firm uh, to this bank, to this bank, uh, to this investment bank who ha gave them uh, uh, these uh, IPOs. Why it's called hoard but underpriced IPOs? You know that when the when you get an IPO uh, very within one or two weeks it will be listed in a stock exchange then obviously most often it happened that IPOs will be almost it will be at par with the price in the secondary market but obviously sometime when you get the IPO it will be little bit underpriced because the price will immediately you will get a higher price within one or two weeks uh, when the IPOs this is securities are listed in the stock market. So this is in a way that spinning this is in a way that they are bribing the executives of the other firms in order to get their consulting business. So because of this you know executives of the firms. So what they will do, it actually they will be doing a bias business, uh, they will be approaching a firm, this firm the investment banker because they got benefited from them, they benefited from them by getting underpriced IPOs for their pers actually a personal, on a personal basis. So this may not be uh, right investment for the firm. So the bias business, they will be giving this consulting business to this firm right to the same investment firm. So this may not be the right investment for the bank for their firm because the this may raise the cost of borrowing and is definitely diminish the efficiency of capital market. And may, maybe the, the same managers they will be approaching the same investment bank uh, for next time when they want to issue an IPO.
right underwriting so at that time they will be approaching the same investment bank so that means uh, they shortlist or identify an investment bank not because of their any the economic concentration but because of uh, they have been benefited because of spinning so without spinning uh, what i want to say here is that an efficient firm investment banker might have fetched a high value of uh, the ipos of the issuing company so this will actually affect the efficient working of the finance market Another area uh, of conflict of interest is in the areas of um, accounting firms. Uh, what if an accounting firm uh, engage in uh, both auditing and consulting business? Uh, let us discuss this uh, in detail uh, in the next section. Um, thank you.